Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today, my guest is a Grammy-nominated artist. Oh, he uh, <laughs> he's, uh, has a Netflix movie. He's been on Sway in the Morning numerous times. Has been on some amazing ciphers. He's dropped some amazing freestyles. Uh, just a, He's just a dope individual, and I'm excited to get to talk to him. It's my pleasure to introduce Oswin Benjamin. What's going on, man? How you how you feeling? That was good. I was like, shit, damn, I forgot to do that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's just, it's so exciting, man. I had um I had White Gold on. I don't know if you follow White oh, Gold, but Oh, yeah, big big Bobby, that's my guy. Hey. Yeah. That that yeah. um that the project I'm talking about that uh, Oswin's Grammy nominated on is a uh, Oh shit, what is the name of that project? That was it was the Royce to 59 project with the dollar bill, but I always forget the allegory. The allegory. Do- yes. That was probably my favorite album for such a long time, and that yeah. was a. It was a. When I I I, that, I was listening to that for like two months straight. You know it's a good album when you literally like just play the album front to back. Like when I got in the car, I wouldn't skip mm-hmm. a single song just over and over and over. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Royce is a. Royce is a scary scary individual bro like uh being in a room with him and watching him work it's like he's like a mad scientist bro like mm. it's it's crazy i'm just like yo i'm glad you sent these to me and i was able to send them back because dog if i was in the stew with him i don't know if the verses would have came out the same <laughs> way bro <laughs> like it's like nah i'm uh let me set my own thoughts in my own little corner and figure this one out because race went Crazy. You were crazy on the project. The intro was like unnecessarily good. Yeah. Like you don't do that for an intro, bro. <laughs> like I think the, the last feeling I got like that was probably when uh Lupe dropped Mural. Mm. I was like, eight minutes, bro, to kick it off? Yeah. Yeah. You just go crazy for eight minutes? All right, bro. Do your thing, bro. Dude, I do have to say though, um, Meek <clears throat> Mill's new album, the intro for that. Have you checked out Meek Mill's new album yet? I, I didn't get all the way through. Uh, I heard the I heard the intro. Meek is a. <sighs> I think because I'm such a like, I'm an artist and a consumer at the same time. Right. So I think we get spoiled, and mm. I think we get spoiled when somebody does something amazing, and it's like I complain about the same shit that I do. Right. So it's like, bro, we all know that classic, 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 Meek intro. Yeah. So I feel like every intro I hear after that, I'm looking for another one of those, not understanding like, yo, this this was a point in time. Like, yeah, he did this for this time. We don't need you to do this over and over again, but you did it. So now anytime I hear an intro, it's like, it ain't that, bro, but I'm a... That's true. I feel that. Yeah, you know I mean? He's one of those artists that like, I feel like you're you're an artist. I, we'll get into this, but... um. He's one of those artists when you first when he first started coming out, like some of the things you'd be saying is like, one day I'm gonna be working with Hove, you know. And then I feel like this one song went under the radar, but DJ Khaled actually put him on a song with Jay Z. I forget what it was it might have been called like Keys, something like that. And it was the song went completely under the radar. I was like, damn. But he had that chance to work with Jay Z. And then like two years later, <laughs> he's fucking actually hanging out with Jay Z. I think he was part of like definitely been part of one of the rock nation brunches i'm guessing you know and it's just yeah. uh, it's just crazy to see like he he made that happen he's been ra- he rapped out about it for so long that it actually just it came into existence meek mill is a manifester bro yeah. like i heard like and it's like he's one of the people that made it uh okay for me to be where i'm at you know what i mean like cause i think a lot of times he's just so focused on what the next thing is going to be so when milestones happen, he brushed past it because he's looking for the next thing. But like, I remember there was a point in time, like people were making fun of Meek Mill um, mm. because he kept talking about his Roly so much. <laughs> his Roly, yo, my Roly do this. I got the, I got the Wraith. I got, you know what I mean? And you would hear him talking about these specific things over and over again. And it was like, <clears throat> it wasn't annoying to me. Cause I'm just like, yo, he worked mad hard to get this. Yeah. Now he got it. Let that man enjoy it. Let him let him let him make a couple records about the road, bro. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Meek was one of the people that made it all right. Like, all right, cool. Like if I have a Grammy nominated line, bro, 
it's all right for me to have more than one of those thoughts. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, we work hard to get to these places. And social media make us feel like, all right, you got to hurry up. All right, what, what else you did? What else you did? What's the next thing? It's like, nah, bro, let me be here for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? With your, um, you, you manifested it too, man. When you were, um, the pressure song, you were talking about, yeah. you wanted to get an engagement ring for Stephanie. Yeah. And then on fucking, yeah. um, what's it called? The Nipsey song, what's that called? Yeah, uh, Nipsey Told Me. Nis- N- Nipsey Told Me, and then you're like, we're married now, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, full yeah, circle yeah, moment yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, bro, that was uh, that that was a probably the, the biggest manifestation, man. Like it was, yeah, like I'm really married, bro, and it's and it's it's fire, just like yeah, bro, like and everything that came along with it, and like yeah, we really, we really said we were gonna do this. And we got it done. And now it's just like, wow, he's not still in this place. Like, I'm able to grow with this artist. Like, he said he was going to get stepped at Wedding Ring. And he did. And then now this is his life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's dope to just let people into the chapters. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. So, you guys got married during the pandemic, right? We got married right smack dab in the middle of that shit. That's <laughs> crazy. Was really like, like, so, it was nuts. But we couldn't. Uh, I mean, obviously we couldn't go to like uh, we couldn't have a ceremony, nothing big, and we uh, with that we wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to get somebody like you know, official to marry us. So I told my brother, who's like dog my best friend, like I got a signature tattoo on my hand, like that's my guy. Wow. You know what I mean, like anybody who's been following the music journey, if you hear Joey or Joel, like that's my older brother. Like I've been talking about him for years. That's my guy. So. Um, when I told him, you know what I mean, like what the plans was, yo, he really went online and got officiated hey. to be a minister so that we could have the wedding in the backyard where we were staying at. You feel me? So like it was crazy. Like it was like a whole thing. Like that whole experience was crazy. It was like three or four people there. It was his son who was like one at the time running around crazy in the backyard, me and my wife dressed in like <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't we ain't had the money to get like the tux and the dress so we was just I was just like yo I always wanted to get married and like a Bruce Lee fit. Oh because of what it like I don't know every time I see that fit I automatically associate it with discipline and honor and respect because maybe because everybody I, I've seen in it, you know what I mean? So like I was like, yeah, I want to do that. She was like, bet. So I'm going to get a dress to match that same thing. Oh. So we had a whole, like, Japanese kung fu type wedding. I got the shoes and all that. It was crazy. That's dope. slip on John. Yeah, so that whole experience was nuts. And then, like, uh, a good friend of mine, his name is Frankie. I was like, yo, my one of my wife's favorite singers, uh, ever. His name is Elliot Skinner. I don't know if you're familiar with him from uh, a group called Third Story. Okay. I don't know if I've so, heard of him. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, he, he's phenomenal. Shout out to Elliot. So I was talking to Frankie. I was just like, yo, Frankie, I know you're cool with Elliot. So if, like, I want to surprise stuff. I know it's a pandemic, but I want to surprise stuff. So, like, you think you can get him to, like, sing a song or whatever cases to, to make it our first dance type shit so it's not some regular so he was just like bro it's done so he sent it to me the day of the wedding and i didn't think elliot was gonna like he was just like yo congratulations steph and oz i know you're about to make a big move and she was just like yo that that's elliot my nigga i was like yeah yeah it's elliot bro like so just that whole just everything bro and then you know what i'm saying and we ended up moving we packed up all of our stuff and we drove the u-haul cross country and now we're not even in New York anymore. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Are you this uh, pandemic was uh, interesting? Are you um interested in being? I don't really know if there is one even. Are you interested in being part of like the Arizona music scene there, or like? So there's definitely there's a music scene out here. Um, it's not as <clears throat> it's not as congested as New York. Um, but there's like I've I've linked up with the people out here who like really getting it done on a high level, and it's like 
I love New York, man. I, I love New York, but it's uh, it's refreshing to be able to just you know step out and be some be somewhere else and see how just different people receive your music or receive you as an entity as a whole. Mm. You know what I mean? So like being out here, it's been nothing but love, and it was weird. Like the first show I had. I never forget it. Like I, I went on stage. I was like, "Damn, nigga, I'm from New York. What's up?" And everybody was like, "Damn!" I was like, "What? <laughs> Yo, I didn't even have to do all that. That's crazy. Let me calm down. Let me relax. I don't got to do all this all here." So it was like, it's just, it was, it was love. And every time I performed out here, the people I've met, like it's a, it's a different sense of uh, camaraderie out here. It's like, all right, we just want to make sure that you get to the level you got to get to. Whatever it is we got to do, you're going to get it done. Like, people are, um, they're way more open to sharing the knowledge that they know about what's going on. Wow. I know in New York, because so many people are doing it, um, people are more uh, inclined, I guess, just hold the gems to themselves. Not everybody, because I've, like, you know, I've linked up with amazing artists in New York, and we converse constantly about all right what's the next thing what's the next thing how can we help each other and then there's the other group of people it's just like yeah nah bro i got this on my own so figure it out yeah you know what I mean? so it's like being around there's people out, out here like that too but it's not as much i haven't ran into as many people like that how long do you have to live in C- um in uh arizona i almost said how long do you have to live in seattle that's where i am <laughs> how long do you have to live um, in arizona before you're considered a Arizona artist. Um, <laughs> that I don't think that will ever happen. I am from I'm I'm a New York artist. I can live here for the rest of my life. Nah, I'm from New York. We not. You know what I mean? Like you know, dogs don't like everywhere. I, I'm doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I don't care where I'm at. Always New York, is, and I'm I. I, God, I've learned everything I needed to know to make me who I am over there, bro. I'm from New York. You could, you could be in Alaska. You're still a New York Yeah, artist. I'm a New York artist, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's dope, though. Have you uh, done any um, scenic drives or anything in Arizona? I know there's... Have you been to, like, Sedona yet or anything like that? So, yeah, like, first of all, like, I feel like... I, I, like, I fuck with God so heavy... Cause I feel like he has different spots on the planet that is just like nuggets. Like if you stumble across this, then you'd be able to really see my work like for real, for real. I think I feel like Utah is like that, and I feel like so like Arizona is one of those places for sure. Like, dope. Like, bro, it's like one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Like every day I'm outside, I'm just like, there's no way. Like, yo, God, you really OD'd out here. <laughs> <laughs> like like you really wild bad out here like it's it's beautiful Sedona's amazing like we um when we moved out here we we, we retook our uh our wedding pictures and we did it in Sedona wow and it came, yeah and it came out crazy like I, I, I love it out here bro as on the fire have like you, literally have you experienced any of the crazy bugs yet though um I've seen I've seen a scorpion Oh, that's and nice. it fucked me up. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I was like, "Nah, dog, y'all niggas is real." Oh shit, like, like it's not just it's rats and roaches where you from. You know what I mean? But like, dog, I seen this. I seen a scorpion for, and like that was. I think that's one of the first things I seen out here. I was with my man uh, Zach, and he was like, "Yo, bro, you know, like, you know, like if you look at like baby scorpions with a black light, they glow in the dark." So why do you know this? Who told you this? Like, 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 what do you do to find this out? You know what I mean? So we really went around this whole crib with a black light looking for like <laughs> baby scorpions. I'm just like, yo, bro, I'm not, I'm not into this, man. It's not my, it's not my thing, dog. I'm, I'm, I'm good. So I've seen, yes, I've definitely seen scorpions. They have like crickets out here that's the size of little, little baby people. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And, you know, but it, it's nothing like, I haven't seen nothing crazy enough to make me be on something like, oh, nah, man, I'm packing it up and going back home. Yeah. I'm a, I'm terrified of spiders. Like, I won't, like, I'm not like a baby about spiders, but I definitely, I'm the last one who's going to kill it. Like, if there's a huge spider in the corner, I'm either going to, I'm either going to vacuum it 
so I'm the farthest away from it, or I'm just leaving that fucker alone. But I've nah, heard, <laughs> yo, you listen. I respect it. I, yo, I need to start vacuuming creatures, bro. I never <laughs> thought about that. It's always like you get a slipper, and it's just like I'm gonna get this nigga. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you decide how you gonna do it. The vacuum, no, bro. That's a why have I never thought of. Oh, you just changed the game just now, man. Yeah, man. Vacuuming everything I see out here. <laughs> There we go. So, so paint a paint a picture for me where, um, like, I understand you're on sway back in 2015. You didn't start mm-hmm. rapping until you graduated college, but how many years was it of rapping before you even were introduced to sway? Like, I don't really understand the timeline so, in between that. Yeah, like it's uh, so rap was so I uh, the first. The first time I like rapped, I guess like I think I was probably like fourteen or fifteen, and I was in like this Christian rap group. We were terrible, so I kind of like forget those days ever happened. But like, look at like I and I I forgot about it until my brother, let's see, Joel, my same older brother, he was just like, "Yo, bro, I gotta play you something." I was like, "Yo, bro, what did you find there?" What did you find us, bro? And it's just like, it's bars from when I was 14, all freaking Jesus bars. And I'm like, dog, like, it was terrible. Like, the first line, wow, I remember this shit. This is, this is nuts. It was like, you need to show some respect, even though you don't like me. I got the game in check, like, my name is Mikey. I remember, dog. And I was like, oh, nice. I'm nice. I'm nice. So like that was the first time, but it wasn't nothing <clears throat> it wasn't nothing serious. So um after that I was doing a lot of singing, bro. Like mom and pops did the church thing. So I was in church every day. So a lot like I thought I was gonna be fucking Kirk Franklin, dog. Like rap wasn't rap wasn't in the cards for me. Like I didn't mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like we play around or whatever. And then um and I had just little encounters here and there where you know freestyle i would like mimic people really well i think when it was serious um it was it was college my man uh tyler busher one of my best friends to this day he uh we was all at a table you know what i'm saying um i never forget that day i think i had on fake products <laughs> i had on that's when h&m was doing the sleeveless hoodies so I had fake burgundy products. I had gray jeans, a burgundy sleeveless hoodie, and a white V-neck. <clears throat> and there was a dude by the name of Pierre, I believe, straight out of Harlem, flyest nigga in the world. You know what I mean? The BB Simon belts with the Maury's on and the and, and the and the Pell with the rhinestones in the back. And we at the table, and he don't even rap like that. But he he just started kind my ass about my fake prouders, oh. about my forehead, how my shit crazy, my shape up was looking weird, and everybody knew me on campus for being a clown. So it was just it was I promise you it was like a stomp the yard moment. So I'm like they're like your eyes don't let that nigga get you like that, and the nigga really just started beating on the table, and I caught a wind. Like if you talk to anybody who rap or who like freestyle there's a moment where it's just like like the way to the way to describe it is kind of like you seen that one transformers where Shia buff was looking like he saw all of the, the the shit that um megatron and them was trying to tell him and he couldn't help but just write it on the walls and shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's just like that oh it's just God. like yo i'm seeing everything everything is happening in slow motion i see all of the words everything is making sense and it felt like time just stopped and I was going crazy. Wow. Killed Pierre in the in the uh in in the fucking lunchroom, dog, cafeteria. Killed him. And my man Tyler Bush was like, yo, bro, you should rap. He was like, dog, I don't rap, bro. I'm an R&B singer, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna do gospel and R&B, bro. Like, I don't rap. He's like, yo, I make beats. I said, don't send me no rap beats, bro. Send me all R&B, bro. I want to make songs about Jesus. Wow, see, that's the thing. I don't feel like a lot of art people or like the audience or fans know that. Like even for me, from checking out your interviews and music, I didn't yeah. realize you had any R&B background besides the stuff you have out. 
Like I thought so, you were not even musically inclined until after that's crazy. college. Yeah, I was I was I was scared of it because I feel like a lot of a big part of writing songs is you gotta trust your ear for writing melodies and shit like that. I never trusted my ear. I hated how I heard music. Mm. So rapping was just easier. So I just never sang and stuff like that. As I got older and started listening to more things, it was uh, you know what I mean, certain influences, you start hearing music differently. So it's not like all right, let me let me get us another let me get us another try. And my um my man left, Jameson left, amazing artist as well, bro. He uh he asked me to sing a hook for him probably like twenty thirteen. And that was what started me really trying to I was like, oh, I kind of body this hook a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, shit, all right, so I'm not trash. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let me see what's up. And then that's when I started getting back into it. So now I'm trying to incorporate a lot more of the singing um, into the music now. But it was, uh, yeah, rap, was it just came easier. Got it. And we're, we're, um, what college you go to? Nyack College. That is in Rockland, New York. It's a theological school. Oh, so like, I went. I went to yeah, like the Jesus thing was heavy. <laughs> you feel me? Like it was a heavy thing. Mom wasn't hearing it. My brother went. I went there because my brother went there, and I knew like, dog, they let anybody in Nyack. Anybody like, I got accepted into Nyack before I got accepted into community college. Like wow. just so you can understand, like, dog, if you got a felony, if it don't matter, you come to Nyack. Don't like just everybody. Everybody's welcome. You feel me? So. And that's why I went to. That's why I went to college. At. So you, you graduate and you become a pastor, or like what happens like when you graduate? You get a... <laughs> like so. I <laughs> you you can. <laughs> but I went there. Uh, I went there for music. I went there strictly for music, oh. which was like no concentration or nothing. I was like, I just want a music degree. Wow. Like just music. I didn't know what I was looking for. I went there straight out of high school. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to college because my brother went to college and my mom is gonna be on my neck if I don't go. So let me just go there to music. And I was there for two and a half years and dropped out. Damn. Why'd you drop out? Yeah. So I came I got kicked out a couple of times before that. Just off of just straight academics. Cause like that was my first time away from home. So it wasn't like, yeah, I'm gonna go there and party crazy. I was just like, yo. I'm going to be involved in every single activity possible. Mm. So I just, I just stopped going to class. So I think the first time I missed class, my teacher wasn't tripping and then I'm coming straight off high school. So like you miss class in high school, the teacher had to talk with you. You can't miss no more days. I missed a day and the dude looked at me like nothing happened. I was like, what? This nigga don't care. All right, cool. He don't care. I don't care. Just stop going to class. And then my GPA, I, I got my, you know what I'm saying? I saw my GPA for the first semester or whatever. And it was a 0. 0.985. Damn. Yep. You got to like, work to do yeah. that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I tried for that. Like, you know what I mean? And the, the teacher, like some teachers, it was like, oh, bro, take the midterm home. You look Cheat if you have to, man. You just come to class. And I was just like, yeah, nah, I got you. And then just never went to class. Oh my gosh. Did you did yeah, you learn did you learn anything? Did like did you learn any music theory while you were there at all? Or uh, slightly. I didn't understand what I was going in there for. I didn't understand what music was. I'm like, like, yo, I want to learn how to play the piano and sing way better. So when they started, I didn't know, like, all right, cool, we gotta start from the Bach era and we gotta study classical music. And then we gotta study this. Then we got to study chord structure. Then we got to study sheet music. Then we got to, you know what I mean? Then you got to know time signatures. Then I was like, dog, I ain't signed up for all this, bro. Mm. I ain't signed up for all this. Like, this <laughs> is a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm going to play basketball and write <laughs> R&B songs. There we go. So where were you in your career musically when you met Sway? Like, I know, like... During when I like just the timeline SoundCloud wise, you were like, I know you were doing like remixes to songs and things like that. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. So after um, my man Tyler, so he like, he was like, all right, cool. <clears throat> I'm going to give you these R&B beats and I'm going to show you how much like you suck 
making R&B music. <laughs> but I'm going to give them to you. And then I was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to prove them wrong. Never happened. And then he was like, all right, cool. And I tried this rap thing. And I tried it. And I was just like, yo, this is like, now that I'm like serious about it, like, yo, this is fire. So I had to go back and listen to everything that I missed coming out. Because my mom, we wasn't listening to nothing on the crib. So like Biggie, uh, Big L, AZ, Jay-Z, all like most deaf, uh, black star, all of these. I, I started listening to them in college. Mm-hmm. So after I'm seeing like, yo, it's really phenomenal the worlds you could create with words. And then I'm not confined to a note or a chord progression. I can just say whatever I feel like saying. You know what I mean? So I think that's when I started taking rap serious. I made a mixtape called Society 101. I made like $500 on campus off of that thing. You know what I mean? Uh, and then after that, I was just like, all right, now in it. Then I really wasn't going to class for real. Like, I'm just in there. I was just writing all day. Like, like that was my, I felt like how many different ways can I come up with clever things to say? So from that, from the mixtape, we, uh, you know, we got out of college. Uh, my, uh, my friend Tyler, he moved upstate with me. And then we was, we was working at Woodbury Commons. It's a big, uh, outlet, uh, shop out there we were working there he got an offer to be a teacher he turned down the, the teaching position because he was like nah dog i'm gonna stay with you and your mom crib in this hot ass room and we're gonna work on music together you wow. feel me? and we really gonna take over the world so we were like dog like summers where the ac wasn't working had a like one of them closets that don't got no door they just slide open i would be in there you know what i'm saying recording no pop filter, just a polo sock over the mic, and we just recorded knocking out songs. Like, you know what I mean? So that was that was the thing. And then we would start putting it out. I think the first song I put on SoundCloud was a Dead President Freestyle. After we put that out, I went through everybody I knew at the time, everybody I was following, it was like 500 people, whatever. And I sent it to every single last one of them. So when I saw the plays on SoundCloud, I was like, yo, yo, 75 people heard this? That's crazy. That's... And then after that, it was just like, all right, bet. We just going to keep doing this. We just going to keep running it up. And I mean, you know, the music got better. We started, uh, I met, that's, that's, that was around the time I think I met Bobby or when I moved down to the city. Oh, White Gold. And he was, uh, he had me in Warner Brothers Studios for days at a time. Dog. Wow. So you actually have like a genuine connection with. That's my guy. Really? I didn't know that. That, what? That, like, first of all, one of the most phenomenal songwriters ever. I don't care what nobody's talking about. You know what I'm saying? The stuff we heard him do with Eminem and the stuff he did with Royce, like, it's, it's cool. Mm-hmm. But, his ability to write songs is crazy. Wow. Like, we would really be in the studio for days at a time. And sometimes, like, I would be going through something. We talk about it in the studio. And after we talk about it, after we talk about it in the studio, I would, like, go to work, go back to Warner after I went to work. And the whole song is done. He's like, yo, I was just listening to you talk and I was writing while you was talking. What you think about this? And it's like a ballad. Wow. I was like, yo, what the hell? And then like make some future March Madness shit right after that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he like incredible. We had a whole situation, bro. Like we had a had a we me and him got a whole album together. Never came up. Damn. Yeah, bro. Like and it's like to this day, it's crazy. Like, I listen to that shit now, and I'm just like, this is incredible. What the fuck is this? Never came out. You need to talk to him about that. Put it out, man. No. Nah, man. That was my fault. <laughs> you know I mean, I, I, I ended up siding with Swain them, and they went, uh, they took things in another direction. So it ended up not happening. But it was, uh, yeah, that's my, that's like one of my closest friends still to think. Wow. Dude, we, yeah. um, we took over, uh, the Eminem Reddit page for like a 
couple days. Like we were? Yeah, we uh we we were trending on our interview was trending on Eminem Eminem's Reddit page. Yeah. How was that, bro? Yeah, we have a it was a, it was a good video. I mean interview. He's a he's a dope dude. He's phenomenal. Phenomenal, uh genius. Yeah, you know I mean like and yo, when I tell you I thought like, all right, cool. He's a songwriter. He's dope. He got the melodies. He got the concepts. Cool, cool. Yeah, have you ever heard him rap, for real? Mm-mm. Except for the, I've I've seen um, you know, just the. He has like one or two singles I've listened to, but it's more like melodic. Right. You know, so I haven't heard him rap, rap though. No. When I tell you, it's no exaggeration. It's like if. Griselda, J Electronica, Andre 3000, and Jay Z were all in a room and just made a clone or made like a, a copy of all of them at the same time. That's how you rap. Wow. It's ridiculous. Damn. It's ridiculous. Like, he let me hear stuff and was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not getting on that song with you. So you got that one. I get on the next one. You're not doing that to me. Nope. Nope. Like there's a there's a song called uh, Beat the Odds. I think I have one on SoundCloud. And yo, like aside from the verse at the end of that, like I wrote the verse, he wrote everything else. And he was like, nah, bro, just take it. Wow. He, like he's he's that guy. I can imagine like the the gems that's sitting in his hard drive right now because that was 2015, 2016. Wow, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, he's phenomenal. No, like nobody's better than him. <laughs> Damn. So, you, so you met him, cooking up music with him, and then what happened next? So, um, so the sway thing happened. I had a show. Uh, it was a day show on like a Wednesday, bro. Like, I don't even know why a promoter would have a day show on a Wednesday and book people. Like, I went there, <laughs> probably like 17 people there, bro. And one of those 17 people uh, was a guy by the name of Rich Nice, right? I think at the time, my wife, we was boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. I think we had just broke up. I'm like super depressed and sad and shit. And I was like, yo, I don't want to do this show. Like, I don't give a fuck about this show. I'm not going to do it. Um, I was like, you know what? Nah, I told him I was going to be there, so I'm going to be there. At that time, I heard everything. Like, yo, Nas, fuck with you, bro. Nas want to hear your shit. Yo, Nas heard your shit. Yo, ho, heard your shit. Yo, this person heard your shit. And every time we would go to set up a meeting, the people would flake. So by that time, I was just like, I I don't believe nothing nobody tells me at this point. So when I met Rich Nice, he actually came to see another artist, but he was late, so he ended up catching my set. <laughs> so he's looking at my set, and he's just like, yo, bro, you're dope. He's like, yo, I work for Sway in the morning. Oh, God. So he was like, send me some stuff. And I'm just like, all right, bro. Went home. He gave me his email. I might have sent him like 30 songs. Like that. Huh. Just, to be a, just to be a dick. Show me, like, here, bro, whatever. You know what I mean? And then the next day, one of them shits was playing on Shade 45. Oh, shit. Now I was like, oh, he was dead ass. He was for real. That's crazy. <laughs> so after that, you know what I mean? Um, Me, Tyler, uh, White Gold, and uh, my man Spence, we we were we supposed to drive to, I think, St. Louis to open up for a little, for a little Boosie. Ooh. And the promoter flaked the night before. My man Spence just got a new job. So he was on, he was just like, yo, I'm going to call out of work because I'm taking this job. Called out of work and all that. Just got the job. Mm. Called out of work. And then we ended up not going. And I remember being in Warner Brothers Studios with them. Tyler was like, yo, like, he was tight. And I was like, yo, I feel like something about to happen, but I don't know why. Ain't no, like, we, there's no way we're this close for this to happen and it don't happen. Something about to happen, though. Something is about to happen. So I got the call from Rich Knight. And he was just like, yo, uh, somebody dropped out for this Friday Cypher. Can you be there tomorrow at uh, at like uh, 8.30 or something like that? I said, bro, I'll be there at 8 o'clock. 
talking about? <laughs> you feel me? Like, and then pulled up, and that was a DNA and uh, K Sean joint. Hell yeah! And how how far was was that a trek for you to get to the station? Or nah, so Warner Brothers was down the block. Oh, okay. Well, wow. serious. Yeah. So it wasn't even that. That's why I was like, man, I'll be there at eight o'clock. I'm down the street. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm not even tripping. So, yeah, that was that was that day. And then from there, you know what I mean? Me, Sway, and uh, Kelly Jackson. That was that's the person who's in charge of booking people. It was, she's pretty much a supervisor for uh, Sway in the morning. Mm-hmm. So she was like, yeah, like. You know, we, we fuck with what you did today. Um, we got this shit called the Doomsday Cipher at the at the end of the year. So, you know, pull up to that. And it was uh it was me, uh King Los, DNA, K Sean, uh Chris Rivers, and a whole bunch of people. Me and Chris was wild cool. Yeah, tell me about your so, what's your connection with uh Chris Rivers? What, bro? That's my the, like. For people who don't know, that's, that's Big Pun's son, correct? Yes. For yeah. people who don't know. Yeah, and not only you know what I mean, like legendary like history, but yo, that's really like my brother. Just to put things into perspective, hmm. like, like he lived out here in Arizona too. Really? Yeah. When I when we we all like me, my wife, him, and his uh. And his uh, girlfriend, well, fiance now, uh, we all came out here, had a trip. It was just like, yo, we're tired. Like, New York is just, we got to do something new. We young still, we don't got no kids. We got to make this move. So when we moved in January, he was just like, oh, shit, I bet. So we're going to get our shit together, and we're going to be out there in March. And then really moved out here in March. Like, he was like 15 minutes away from me now. Holy like, shit. Like, that's, that's my guy. Like, that's my guy. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my like when I tell you like one of my best friends outside of music, just as an individual, like dog, uh, he's seen me at like the worst parts of my life and the best parts of my life. Damn. That's my guy. He has a great he has probably one of the best swing in the morning freestyles when they cut off the fucking mic and he's just Yep, I remember that joint. He had on gray and black. It was like, yeah, just throw me words. I remember seeing that shit, and I said, I don't throw me no words. I'm gonna throw, them, I'm gonna throw them shit right back. Don't, don't, don't throw that nowhere. Nigga, like, I am prepped. You hear me? Anything after this? Oh no, we're done. Good night. You have a good one, dude. That- but he's he's like that. He's a he's an animal, bro. Like, I like I. So, me, Chris, and I don't know if you're familiar with Denzel Porter. Who? Denzel Porter. I've heard of him. I think I've heard one or two of his songs. Yeah, he's another in, incredible. Uh, so we went in like this group, and we about to uh, we dropping an album later this year. And yo, Chris was like, me and Denzel would be in a studio writing these verses. Wait, you guys crazy. have a you guys have a cipher together or something? Also, you yes, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how I know Denzel. Okay, yeah. So like, so we just we just wrapped up. Um, we just wrapped up an album, so wow. When we were like, me and Denzel would be writing. Chris would be like, "All right, I'm, I'm gonna do some running around, and I'm gonna pull up." Like, I'm not giving you more than probably three songs a day because I really gotta sit and think, and God, like lines gotta connect. Whatever the case is, I might give you three on a super good day. You'll get four. <laughs> Feel me? Chris was like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna pull up to the stew." Um, I just gotta I gotta knock out like fifteen collabs and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna come and then I'm gonna uh, work on an album with y'all. Damn. You gotta do what? Are like you excuse excuse me, sir? You gotta do what? He's like yeah, nah, I'm gonna just knock out these fifteen collabs and then you know we gonna work on an album. And then he would really come in and then go crazy like he didn't do anything for a bit. Like that's like wow. I I haven't seen anybody when it comes to music work like how he works. That's crazy. Yeah, he's yeah ridiculous. What was what was it like uh, being on that cipher with? You said King Los. Yeah. What what was it like being like just being in the same room as him, bro? Me and Chris called each other because 
I was like, yo, I don't know what these beats are going to sound like, and I don't know who we're going to be paired up with. So I was like, just in case we paired up with Los, we need to have our verses ready, bro. So I got up with Chris the night before, and we rapped damn near all the verses we had, bro. We must have been at his house for like six, seven hours, bro, just rapping verses to each other. Wow. Like, yo, what you think about this one? Nah, not that one, not that one. Add that one to your flex verse or your sway verse. Not this one. You go hold this one. What about this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, that one was a go. You know what I mean? Like, what about this one? Nah, nah, yeah, that one's a go. This one? Nah, we can put that on the song. Yo, what about this one? And we were doing that for each other. Wow. And thank God none of us got partnered up with that man, bro, because I'd have been tight. You can't prep for somebody like Lowe's, bro. He's he's gonna he's gonna do whatever he do, and you're gonna have to deal with it. He's such a dope freestyler, man. Like whew. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he he's incredible. He uh he dropped a what was it called? He actually dropped a project a couple like three months ago or so. It was just a mixtape of just um and he was, and he was wilding on everything that's out right now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I heard I heard all of it and I say, yo, I'm good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. You got it, bro. What you want me? To, what you want me to do with that? You feel know I me? Mean? You got it. You do your thing, Lowe's. I'll I'll be a fan from back here. There we go. So, mm-hmm. so sway in the morning is. He said it's on Sirius XM, right? Mm-hmm. But that's like a so. There's like the Breakfast Club sway in the morning. How do? How does like the average listener listen to sway in the morning? Don't you have to pay for Sirius XM? So how do they? Yeah. How do they? How do they have an impact? on the culture besides Sway just being, you know, who he is. Like, how do they it's reach them? Like, with... Yeah, no, God, I'm sorry. Oh, what were you saying? I was just saying, how does how do you reach a, a bigger audience if you have to, besides just YouTube, on your commute to work, if you have to pay for Sirius XM or whatever? So, you know, people, people pay for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, and it's like the, the, sub, the subscriptions of, like the, the numbers that Sirius XM bring in a day because there's so many different radio stations. It's not just like Sirius XM. It's Sway in the morning. Mm. It's like you got Sway, you got DJ K Slay, you got um static selectors on Sirius. Like and all of wow. these people, yeah, they're there all day with their different segments. So it's kinda like it's it's like radio that don't stop. And depending on what you want to listen to, that's what you can tap into. You see what I'm saying? So, like, they have millions of subscribers, bro. Mm. So, and I think that's why everybody made it such a big deal when you get on Sway in the Morning. It's kind of like, yo. And he would do these, like, freestyles and stuff live. So, like, he would do these things and people would call in. Wow. From around the world. You know what I'm saying? Just to just to talk to whoever's there that day. So, his impact is is ridiculous. And now the reach with that and, you know, YouTube and everything else, like the reach is ridiculous. He's he's had on a he's had on my uh, previous guest, and he's um I don't know if you know who Katil is, but Katil's um he's out of North Seattle, and uh, okay, he actually was um where's he signed right now? Fuck, I forget. It might be, I think Katil signed to some like like Atlantic's like the main record label but he's something underneath Atlantic or something I forget okay. but um, yeah Katil's craziest story is crazy but he had a Sway in the Morning um, freestyle I mean interview like last year or something yeah. and he was so excited about it that they're like okay the great interview is about to be over and he was like Katil was like wait 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 I have a, I have a freestyle I want to spit to you so there was no beat yeah. or anything because it, it, it was during the pandemic so everything was just like those phone calls he fucking straight up yeah. started rapping on the phone. I was like, "Holy yeah, shit!" Yeah, yeah. Teal's hungry. Yeah, that's a sway is sway is good for that. He's he's created such a name, um, in the in the culture, and he's done a very very good job at quality control. Him and Kelly both like they like knowing who's gonna be on the show, who's gonna rap, and what's gonna be like. Like I've seen different platforms come and go. Like yeah. I remember. Like when uh Black Thought did the uh 
the flex freestyle or like when Lo Deluxe did the, the deflection right, and the world kind of stopped. And that was the platform to be on. You know what I mean? And then when Flex started bringing everybody up there after that, I like nobody really cares about getting on Flex and rapping no more. Yeah. But Sway has kept the integrity. Him, Kelly, Heather B, Tracy G, uh, DB, DJ Wonder, like all of them have kept that integrity of the station. So crazy. So when you up there and you got to rap, people really pay attention because not everybody's going to come up there and do whatever it is. As opposed to some of these other platforms, they let everybody up. You got some good numbers or whatever the case is, they'll let you up even if you suck. With yeah. them, it's kind of like, all right, cool. We're going to really be strategic on who we let up here because it's not for everybody. Like, LA Leakers is like that now, too. Yeah. that Actually, that makes that makes a lot of sense. sense. And that's something I should be thinking about, too. With um, mm. I, I recently added free, a freestyle section to my podcast, and I feel like yeah. I've... What I've also noticed a lot of up and coming artists, mm-hmm. um, they're actually you can only you can really only just call them artists and not hip hop because you can't really call mm-hmm. a lot of artists nowadays like rappers because yeah. they're singing and rapping and half the time they have no idea how to do a freestyle. So I've been having rappers on and I'm like, oh shit, they're definitely gonna want to rap, and they're like, yeah. I have no idea how to, and I'll have some like just hard motherfuckers on and they'll, they'll be like i have no idea how to freestyle i'll be like what the yeah you, you look yeah, like someone who's doing a freestyle yeah it's a it's a thing man and it's um and i think because of where we at now how people are listening to it i don't feel like people are listening to music to be impressed as much yeah now i feel like when you have a freestyle segment to anything like your litter your job is to go up there and be impressive so if, if we're in an era of people who don't care to be impressed and they just want to feel, they just want to feel something, you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, a lot of the um, impressiveness can get overlooked, mm. you know what I mean? So I've, 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 noticed, I've noticed that too. It's like, y'all, y'all make dope music, um, but the people who come from a certain era is kind of like, nah. I had to study this person before I rap. I couldn't step in the studio if I didn't know who this person was or you know what I mean? Like it was it was a different type of reverence for the craft. It's kinda of like you gotta you gotta understand who did this before you to understand the privilege that you have. Or it was more so of a privilege back then. Now it's everybody has access to it. Yeah. It's the internet, it's a you got your own mic, you get your own pro tools, and you can be a hip hop artist just like this. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, it wasn't like that before, so it was a, it was a deeper respect for it. Like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I can't do what Jay Z do, so I'm not even gonna do it. Yeah. I can't do what Lauryn Hill do. I can't do what Wyclef do. I can't do what Wu Tang does. So I'm just, nah, I'm just not gonna do it. Now it's just like, let me try it. Let me get a good gimmick. Yeah. And after the good gimmick, I need a couple face tattoos or whatever the case is, and I'm a little Zan. Yeah. That's a little Zan, man. Him saying he's better than Tupac and all that shit. I'm like, oh. you see what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, you have to like, or like when uh, Lil Yachty shot can't give you five Biggie songs. <laughs> that's nuts. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's that's the era we in now. So, I it makes sense why you know that's why I respect Sway still. Like, if he might not even ask you, he might just be a regular interview. And yeah, it is what it is. You know what I mean. And if you're dope, he'll let you know. Like, all right, come up here with with some shit. Yeah. I know uh, bars on I ninety five is on that too. I I don't think I've seen a whack segment from them yet. You know what I mean? Like the people who come up there, they understand what it is they gotta do. Yeah, it's a. I think the. Um, did you ever check out the Tyler the Creator freestyle on Funk Flex though? Of that course. shit was hilarious. Was, that was the of most course. awkwardest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That was amazing. I was like, yo, I, re- I respect because it's like you got to – I respect it not because of the content. I respect yeah. it more so because that's a platform everybody takes so serious. Like, dog, and not just that one. I remember um, prepping myself for the Sway joint. Bro, I felt like I didn't sleep for the week. <sighs> I would like drink water, take a nap, wake up and go over this verse. That was it. Like wow. all 10 minutes. Like, like 
and I would call people to hear all 10 minutes. Like, yo, what you think about this, bro? Did you get bored at any part? Like, yo, did any bars, was, was they weak? Like, this needs to be a flawless 10 minute verse. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but I, I, I care. You feel me? Like, so it's a, it's a different. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about how you got connected with Royce. I got connected with Royce through Rook from Justice League. Oh shit! You know people from Justice League. Yeah, Rook was so in that whole like era when I was in um Warner Brothers with White Gold and my man Tyler and everybody else. Rook was there too, so he was there cooking up stuff for everybody. You know what I mean? So I remember. <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> Rook was uh, Rook was letting me hear stuff from Book of Ryan in 2015. Wow! So I was like, you know, and being a New Yorker, I, I think the initial thing is to hate. So he was just like, "I got this Royce," and I was like, "Yo, Royce is whack, bro. I don't even want to hear that." I didn't even never heard never heard a Royce song before then. Wow. So I was like, "Nah, you whack, bro. You whack." How he whack? You heard his stuff now, nah, bro. He just whack. You feel me? Like that? Like it, it? It doesn't make sense. That's just how New York people act. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. But I was like, yeah, now nah, he's whack. So he let me hear some. I was just like, no, he is nice. <laughs> he's be nice. And then he was just like, all right. So um, we got a we got a giant. Um, he got a joint at Gramercy Theater. Um, if you want to pull up, just to meet him and stuff. So. Uh, I met him and I never forget it, bro. <laughs> uh, when I met him, I gave him a dap and I was just like, yo, bro, um, I just gotta, I gotta come clean. I gotta be honest with you. Like, I thought you was trash without giving you a chance, without listening to none of your shit. I thought you was trash. Rick, let me hear some shit. And Dog, I had to like one. I just want you. I just I'm I'm telling you this so you know. It's not like yo. I've been a fan since day one. I'm telling you this so you know. Like dog, not that it matters. I bet you care, but like yo, you really earned my respect, and you're fucking phenomenal, dog. <laughs> and he was just like, yo, nobody's ever come up to me like that, and put me on like that. Yo, you hungry? And we all went out to eat that night. Oh shit! Chopped it up about politics and. All types of, we had some shits called hush puppies I never had before. <laughs> like, um, I wrote a whole verse about it, bro. I was like, this shit is crazy. You never had hush like, puppies this, before? Never had hush puppies. Not, not before then. That's crazy. I was like, what is, I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, that was the, my, my first interaction. And then there was some years that I didn't, um, I didn't talk to Royce and then he DM'd me. Wow. And was just like, yo, uh, give me a call when you get a chance. I said, What the fuck? <sighs> Called him browsing the phone for three hours, bro. Talking about life. Wow. All types of shit. And he was just like, yo, so um I want you to be on my album. <laughs> I said, You I said, bro, send them over, bro. What you need? So he sent me two joints and he was just like, yo, just pick one and send them back. So I sent I sent both of them back the next day. And I was like, yeah, bro, you pick which one you fuck with. <laughs> and you know what I mean? One of the joints ended up making it. And since then, like, like I talked to Royce about life problems. I talked to Royce about writer's block. Like that's like that's 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 like a, a mentor. He's like a, and a really, really good friend at the same time. Damn. Yeah, and w- when did you know that White Golden was connected with him? Um, I can't remember when I found out, but um, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know. Well, when I did find out, he was just like, "Yo, bro, I was in uh, I was in the Heaven Studio." And I hit him up and I was just like, yo, bro, like, I'm really, like, I seen that y'all was working. Like, yo, I'm really over here in Detroit right now with this nigga. He was like, yeah, tell him I said what's up. Because they're like, they're, they're good. They're, they're, they're super cool. 
And I was just like, yo, what a small world, bro. Like we was really working out of Warner Brothers. Now you got records with Eminem and now you got records with Royce. Like, that's, like this is crazy. Like yeah. we had years without speaking. And then like, I connect with you again and this is the platform that you're on. That's nuts. Damn. So how did you get part of Warner Brothers Studio? Like, so that? White Go, before he was uh, White Go, he was a producer. B-Works. B-Works, yes. B-Works, the producer. <laughs> so I met him through um, a friend of mine uh, named Max. And Max was just like, yo, bro, you're nice. I need to, I need to connect you with my man B-Works and Warner Brothers. And at that time, I was like, Warner Brothers? You know what I mean? Like, it was a, like, so we went to Warner Brothers and chopped it up. Um, and since then, you know what I mean? That was a, that was my connection to him. It was through uh, somebody else that uh, me and my boy Tyler met. That's dope, though. Yeah. That's crazy. That seems That must feel like such a small world for you to meet him, and then you guys end up both knowing Royce and all that. It's crazy. That's why. It's crazy. I'm just like, yo, bro, we were really sleeping in the studio trying to figure it out. And then, like, I look up a couple years later, and it's just like, yeah, white gold on this uh, Eminem song. I'm just like, yo, Bobby, you got a song with Eminem? <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. And then to have another joint on the B side to the joint where he dropped the, you know, I was just like, yeah, you win, bro. <laughs> you win, man. You got it. That's great. So tell me how your life's changed since... uh being on Netflix, or are you doing like lots of, uh, what is it called? Like when you test out for, uh, so like, uh, auditions and stuff like that, right? Or the, like table, table reads. And table reads. Yeah. How many are you doing those yeah. a lot or? I would love to bro. Like, but I think that was a, that was a moment. Um, it was dope. There was a lot of love after that moment. Um, and I got a couple calls to do other things, but that was like my first time acting ever period so like the the other joints that i was getting it was like it was dope shit i just didn't get any of them mm. <laughs> after that so it's like uh that's something i want to look into though like whether it be uh acting classes or whatever like because that whole experience was fire to me like yo i need to be in way more movies or tv shows or whatever like yeah. i didn't realize how much i fucked with till i was there is it like when you're when you're on set? Like, is, is it almost impossible to fail though? Like, when you see a movie, it just seems like effortless. But there's probably a millions of takes before it's perfect, right? Or like, how is how does that work? Yeah. So, luckily, the people I was working with was dope. Like, uh, shout out to Rada Blank. So, she was the main character in the joint. She wrote the whole thing and starred in it as a lead knowing I had no experience she was really taking one-on-one meetings with me like walking me through the script to make sure that I didn't mess it up you yeah. feel me so like she was very hands-on and I think because that was my first experience I know I'm not gonna have experiences like that uh in the future but she made it it was weird because she was like yo I I want this role to be you and use the script kind of like a guideline mm. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you don't have to stick to the book for real, for real, but stick as close to the book as you can. So she gave me room to, you know what I mean? Kind of add and, and you know, inflections and things like that where I needed to. But it was, uh, nah, there was, there were times where, you know, I didn't get the line or, you know what I mean? But it, it, that opened up my eyes to what like acting is. And it's kind of like, yo, Acting is really acting like you not acting. Yeah. Like, yo, the dopest actors in the world, we we love them because they would do shit that we would really do in real life. You know what I mean? Like, I just, and I just started looking at all the old movies that I love, started looking at them differently. Like, I look at it above the rim, like, oh, Pac was really nice. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? I look at Trainer, they like, yo, 
that's what Washington is really, really different, bro. Like, if I was an undercover cop, I would act, or I would assume I would, <laughs> like, if I was a dirty cop, like, I would act just like this. You know what I mean? Like, so it was, it was, oh, man, what an experience, bro. I dead, I, I want to do it again. What was, uh, what was it like for um, your wife, though, to see that you had a sex scene as your, as your first film debut? So, that was, uh, <laughs> so the thing is, <laughs> so, I read over the whole script with her. And I, I respect Rada for that too, because after um she was just like, This is a role you'd be interested in. I'm just like, Yeah, dude, what are we doing? Oh yeah. She was like, Did you read? I was like, Nope, but I'm with it. What are we doing? She said, Yo, dog, moving forward, always read the script. Mm. Always read the script before you find out somebody got you doing some wild shit on page 30 that you don't know about. You already signed a contract. Now you gotta do it. If you don't, you know, lawyers and yo. Know, always read the entire script so i read the script and i was just like oh all right. and i sat down with my wife and i was like yo bro how you feel about this and she was just like oh i mean do your thing i mean what you what you want me, what you want me to tell you like you know what i'm saying so i remember uh the way that they shot the giant i was super nervous to do it but they didn't. They don't shoot movies in the sequence that you see them. Mm. So, for the roles that I had to do, I was shooting. I think for like three weeks, and every day for the three weeks, I didn't know when the scene was gonna be. <laughs> so you just surprised every time you get on set. Like, all right, cool. What are we doing today? I right, tell you not today. <laughs> Yo, we shot that scene. I believe it was the last day. Wow. I've been, so every day for three weeks, I felt that thing in my stomach. <laughs> like, oh man, all right, today's not it. I, all right, today's not it. And I'm trying to like prep myself, like, all right, cool, yeah, right, yeah we gonna do it, we gonna get it done. But it was like, <laughs> yo, bro, an experience for real. And I'm just like, all right, cool. So when everything was done and I saw it, I think uh, I saw it ahead of time, and. Uh, then they did like a driving movie theater and that's when I saw it with my wife and we were watching it and for the whole time I'm looking at it like are you good? Are you alright? You straight? And she was just like yeah nigga I'm, I'm glad you wasn't whack you know what I'm saying? I'd have been mad if you had to do that and and it was terrible and you were <laughs> trash and you looked uncomfortable then I would have got mad oh, like alright if you're gonna do this like really do it you see what I'm saying? That's crazy. So, yeah, that was it. <laughs> that that was that experience. It was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Damn. And are you still are you still connected with Radha? Are you guys like talk ever? Or? Yeah, that's like that's another one of my. Uh, she so she became a close friend throughout this whole, uh, throughout the whole process, just walking me through the joint, and you know what I mean. And she's like, yo, she really rap for real. Wow. Like, all of the stuff you've seen in the, like, all her verses, she wrote her verses. Like, the girl that did the poem in the beginning, like, she wrote that. Like, she's a she's really a writer for real. So, like, we would, we would bond over hip-hop and she'll give me things to listen to and things like that. Like, she's she's dope. Wait, why does no one fucking talk about the fact that Young Amay was in that movie? There were a lot of people in that film, and it fucked me up <laughs> because I didn't see any of them the days that I was shooting. Ah, oh. yeah. So like, I didn't see Young and Me on set. Like, that wasn't the day that I had to come in. Damn. So I was just like, how did how did y'all get like? I, when I seen Styles P on set, I was just like, that guy was on my project. <laughs> They're like, yo, this is really crazy. Like, this is really happening for real. Like. Uh, I seen Dime a Dozen was in the joint. Um, like just like I seen a bunch of people. I'm just like this is fire. It's like it's really a New York hip hop like love. It's like a ode to New York. As much as it's about like her and her life, like it's really like yo, I I I feel New York every time I watch that. Wow. 
I could see a, I could see an Oswin and Young M.A. song. That'd be crazy. That'd be fire, bro. <laughs> That'd be fire. I fuck with Young M.A. That'd be tough. And, yeah. and she's nice. Yeah, she is. She's way way better than a Cardi B. <laughs> I think Cardi B is Cardi B is is dope, but I feel like uh, we all love Cardi B because of her personality. Yeah, and because her personality is so is so uh, different and it's so dope, you have no choice but to fuck with whatever that she's doing. Yeah, that's fair to say. Yeah. So what's uh what's what's next for you? You dropped your album. Um, that was that was twenty twenty. So we're in twenty twenty one now. It's almost yeah twenty twenty one. No, you dropped that in twenty twenty one, right? It was the beginning of January. That was January. Yes. January. January, and then we uh we re released it after uh we got out of the deal. So, yo, it's a lot. We we working on a lot. It's a it's a lot behind the scenes. Um, we got a, got a couple projects in the works. Um, me, Chris, and Denzel. Uh, we got the masters in for that. We just figuring out a date to release that. Hey. Um, there's a DJ out of New York, and then with Nyla Simone, okay. Fire One Hundred Five, who's phenomenal. We got a project. Um, oh. There's this uh, group called a Binary Group, which is uh, my man Tyler Busher and uh, his girlfriend Jenny. I did an EP with them. I'm working on another joint with uh, Chris Dave, who's a drummer, it's amazing. Like working on some with him then i'm working on my own album after that so it's like it's a lot of you know what i mean just wow. surrounded with music and beats and love and yeah we, we got we got a, we got a lot of things planned hell and, yeah and whatever happens in between there damn you're you're a busy man man i'm telling you i'm doing the best i can bro yes sir well, what is some advice that you have for up and coming artists, creators, influencers? Um, I hate to sound uh, cliche, but uh, don't rush the process and hold on to peace whenever you can get it. I think being a creative, we uh, our job is literally to take thin air and make something out of it and it's very uh once we start the depending on people to determine what's good and what's not off of our natural ability just to create things um it can get heavy you know what i'm saying so you're gonna doubt yourself you're gonna uh second guess yourself you're gonna do all of them things but make sure that you hold on to peace when you get it you know what yes, i mean sir. Hold on to hold on to that man. It, it comes soon far in between. And what's the easiest way for people to reach you? Instagram. You know what I mean? Uh Oswin Benjamin. Give me one second. I think somebody's on my door. Can we do that? Yeah. All right. Matter of fact, nah. They they go hold on. Okay. Right. Oswin Benjamin on Instagram. You know what I mean? Oswin Benjamin everywhere. That's me. Wait, you have, so you're you're British. Do you have a British accent? You could do real quick to wrap this up. Of course. I mean, what is it you need? You know, I, I could be Idris. I could be whoever. You know, it, it is what it is, really. You know, <laughs> that's I'm dead. Check <laughs> yeah, out uh, a check out Osmond's new single, Rain. Right, that's what it's called. Rain, and I got another one coming the fifteenth of October with my boy Annoyed called Be There. Oh fuck! Ooh. Yeah. And then, you know, I got another one after that. Hell so, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we dropping them. We dropping them all. Uh, we dropping them for the rest of the year, man. That's awesome. Well, it's the NAS podcast with... Oswin Benjamin. You know what I mean? Appreciate you, NAS. This was phenomenal, man. Great talk.